is Dr. R. Ovila Mandaregi, Professor, Department of CSC Cyber Security. Today, we will discuss the cluster setup and its administration. Now, affordable cost, we have to provide in the cluster community, as well as the processor also, processors, affordable rates, we have to uh, see the affordable rate and the processors also. That will be done. So, uh, now we we'll see here now. So, affordable and uh, efficient clusters in tutorials everywhere. Now, that has to be uh, that has to become as ISP networks and the processor start becoming community partners. And uh, many uh, traditional cluster systems are getting somewhat cheaper. That is our intention. So, the cluster, whatever the traditional cluster system has to be, that has to be produced as, uh, as much as possible, it has to be produced with a cheap cost. So, now it is in restricted, there is no restriction to uh, restricted access to the systems. The cluster system is longer to specific, no restricted, no restricted access systems. Now, to achieve this goal, we have to go for a VFR project now, VFR project system. It has to be a, uh, it has to be created with a cluster computer that has produced with a cheap network, cheapest network, cheap node, and uh, it has to be used with a Linux operating systems. Uh, the cluster systems it has uh, not only it has to be taking the uh, combination of number of PCs or workstations, but it has to be a given whatever the task from getting from the user, the task has to be completed at a effective time. Efficient. Effectively, we have to done the jobs from those we are taking from the users. That is the main intention. Not only we have to combine with a group of systems or a combination of workstations, but our intention is that has to be whatever the jobs getting from the cluster nodes that has to be effectively completed. That is a major task. Now, for achieving of this, we have a project. This is a one of the thing it has to be created created with a cluster computing systems. It has to be created with a significant event in the cluster computer that will produce with a cheap networks, cheapest network, cheap as a node, and it is mostly used for a Linux operating system. Now managing clusters. And third thing, managing clusters in a VAP of power systems, that has to be a conventional system. See that uh, the managing system, the conventional systems has a unique requirement. That have with a unique requirement that is uh, coming with a uh, cluster computing that may be uh, faced with a difficult custom solutions that has required as a more solutions and do as a, a lot of work. So, this is a thing managing a cluster system from conventional to from conventional system to cluster systems. It has to be a, with a different uh, the unique resource requirement that have contains in a conventional systems. And uh, we have to custom solutions, we have to produce with a custom solutions as well as the lot of hard work that has to be changed with the conventional system to cluster, uh, managing with the clusters. Now, we have to set up with a cluster, a group of class clusters. This is the most advantages because of it, is a, it has to be generated with the cheapest mode, cheapest clustering and uh, it has to be uh, used with the Linux operating system. Now, the, the, what is the main purpose to create it for a cluster? So, first intention, our intention is the first, the cluster purpose. What is the purpose you have to create for a cluster? So, what is the design? Design uh, before design the interconnection network or computing your nodes. So, before this, we have to see that what is the purpose we have to create for the clusters. So, the aim should be clear. See an inter interconnection network, how to design the interconnection network and a computing nodes. See interconnection networks. The interconnection network that has to be uh, combination with a different uh, network technologies that has fast Ethernet, there has to be a combination of uh, fast Ethernet, MyraNet, SCA, scalable computing interfaces, and uh, scalable coherent interface and uh, ATM. Uh, these are all the fast network that, that will be all supporting with a network technology. Uh, we have to choose with a different network topologies also that has a that how the switches. Or direct to point to point connection with a cross cross cable and hypercube that has contained with a 16 or 32 nodes and dynamic routing protocols, uh, which has dynamic routing protocol has more traffic and complexity that has to produce with a more traffic and complexities. Operating system support for binding, 
several physical interfaces into a single virtual one or higher throughputs. So this is uh, creating the outline of this slide uh, tells that uh, interconnection networks, how to the interconnection network we have to form. Now for this one we have to create it with a front end systems. The front end systems which has to be created with file transfer and uh, logins, it has to be created with a logins, user logins to access the mm -hmm. systems and uh, uh, file transfer other one we have to use for front end system, front end setup. First, uh, behalf of uh, project creation, we have to go for a front end setup. That purpose we have to use for NFS, network uh, file services. The most cluster have one or several NFS server nodes that have contained one or more NFS server nodes. But it is NFS is not a scalable, it is uh, NFS is not scalable or fast, but it works. Not a scalable. But it is not an extension. Extension purpose it is not supported. But it is a cost. But it is works in a cluster. Now coming to that uh, front end system, the the requirement of the front end system is some distribution node where users log in from rest of the network. That has to be other. The other task of front end system is submit jobs the rest of the clusters where they submit jobs to the rest of the clusters. So that is the main role of login and uh, submit jobs to the rest of the cluster. That is the main role of a front end system. This front end system that will support it with a that will support it with a uh, this is the project like uh, what is the project name? B of B of class clusters. I want to set up with a B of B whole B whole class clusters. Now NFS that has to use with a front end systems. Now in the front end system advantages are so it is login. Users log in and compile the it has to be checked with the errors, compiling and debugging. If it is rectifying the errors, that has to be corrected and submit a job. This is the role for a front end system. That is the main advantages. Advantages of using front end in NFS systems. Now keep the environment as similar as to the node as possible. Similar node environment it has to be created. Node environment. Keep the environment as similar to the node as possible. And it is contained as a Advanced IP routing capabilities that will produce with a security improvements and load balance. That will produce with a security and load balance. Advanced IP routing capabilities that has to be adapted with a uh, adapted into a system that has to pro produce with a security and load balance. And uh, provide ways to improve security, but makes administration much easier in a single system. Management. In a management in the front end system, as install or remove software logs, you have to remember softwares install or remove software uh, logs for problems and start a set. These are all the management, central management you have to perform with the cluster systems. What are glo global operations? In the front end system, the global operations are running the same command, total, total cluster system, it has to be run with the same command. And distributing command on all or selected nodes. We have to distribute commands on all or maybe selected nodes. So these are all the major advantages that they use for front end systems using front end systems, which are uh, which are supporting with the NFS systems. Now this is a two cluster, two way cluster configuration systems. Majorly we observe that the, uh, we have to observe that uh, exposed cluster systems and uh, enclosed cluster system. These both are supporting with a Communication purposes. Now we observed here now intra intra cluster classification. This is the one type of class intra intra cluster communication. These are all the two ways. This is the front end systems logs submit a jobs. These are all over uh, here inside of these front end systems that has with a clusters cluster each node is considered as a one cluster systems. Here that cluster one cluster two and so on like that. We have to maintain different. Group of clusters, the cluster, the clusters here front end systems use up a front end system that has to be connected with a connected with a users. Users has to be communicated through a uh, intra intra cluster communication that has to be communicated with a intra cluster communications. Explosive cluster system, enclosed cluster system, both are supporting with a communications. Here we have to focus on the Front end systems that has to be used for a login. The user has to be logging in any cluster systems, 
either inter or maybe inter intra cluster communications. Either uh, it has to be a submitting job, the user has to be submitted a job that has to be uh, executed with the different cluster systems and uh, jobs has to be executed, authentications, authentication also here yeah, logins, logins will see the print answers. This is the way two cluster configurations. Now no setup in a cluster, cluster systems. Now you have got that uh, setup, setup of the clusters, setting up, setting of the clusters, no setup. Inside a cluster, we have to create it with a node. You have observed that. Inside a cluster, we have to have a different nodes. Huh? Now, how to a node setup? First thing is how to create it with a node setup. The thing is how to install all the nodes at a time. This is the question. Huh? So, how to install all the nodes at a time? That will be achieved, uh, that will be achieved through with the network boot and automated remote installation. Or uh, provided that all nodes we have same configuration, we have nodes all have the same configuration. The fastest way is to usually to install a single node and then make as a clone. Make a clone. So this is a network boot and automated remote installation or same configuration. We have the same configuration. We have to install all the nodes at a time. This is the uh, category. And see, second thing is how can one have access to console of all nodes? Either keyboard monitor selector, not a real solution, and does not a scale even a middle-sized clusters. And uh, to achieve of this one, use for a software console. This is the way we have to node setup. Node setup has to be created with a cluster. So directory services inside the clusters. The main thing is directory which has to be sharing the data in between the cluster systems, within a process or uh, within a cluster system among the all. Across the cluster systems, it has to be a shared with a across the clusters, the directory services, the files has to be a, the files has to be sharing from one clusters to other clusters. For example, this is a cluster one. Now this is think about that the cluster eight. So now I want to sharing uh, data with a cluster A, sharing some directory files, directory or uh, something uh, it has to be shared with a cluster A. Now in between, across the all cluster systems, it has to be a sharing the directories. Now see here, how to share with a directory system, directory services inside the clusters. So here cluster is supposed to keep a constant image across all its nodes. It has to be an image, a consistent image. It has to be a consistent image across all its nodes, such as a software, same software, or maybe a same configuration. And uh, need a single unified way to distribute the same configuration, distribute the same configuration across the clusters. So we have to establish these two points, uh, two things following in clusters. That has to be directory services inside clusters has to be a Within a cluster, the same configuration across the clusters, we have to we have to sharing our files from one cluster to other clusters. Now here yeah, directory services inside the cluster that has to see two things now. Huh? NIS network interface services uh, versus network interfaces plus. So now here yeah, NIS that has to be introduced by some microsystems. It has to be a client server protocol for distributing system configuration data, such as uh, uh, such as user and host name between the computer and networks. So it has uh, user and the host names between computer and networks. So now keeping a common user database, it has to hold with a common uh, common user databases. No way of it has no way of dynamically updating network routing information. Or any configuration changes to user defined applications or any configuration changes to user defined applications. So, this is network uh, interface services. NI, NIS plus is the advanced of the NIS, this is a substantial implement over NIS, but it is widely used, but it uh, but it's not it's so widely widely available. It is a somewhat administrator purpose, see the mess to the administrator for the administration point of view. It has to be complicated to operate at this NSI plus. Leaves must to be a wizard and still leaves must to be a wizard. For the administration point of 
your point of view, it is more complicated to operate with the NIS and NIS plus. So that is the NIS versus NIS plus. Now LDA, LDA, lightweight, here the extension to form of this LDA is a lightweight, lightweight direct directory access protocol. It has to be a too complex for internet clients to use. It has to be a too complex for simple internet clients to use. LDA. And I define relatively simple protocol for updating and searching directories running over TCP IP. This has to be used of TCP IP. TCP IP, it has to be directly running over through a TCP IP protocol. And uh, then observe that uh, what is that uh, LDP, lightweight uh, direct access protocol versus user authentication. The user authentication, it has to be a copying. Uh, it has to be a solution of copying password file to a each node. It has to be copying the password file to a each node. And uh, it has to be a different solution. It has, there are different solutions and it has maintained with a different configuration tables. Now DC, distinct complex environment. This is DC, distinct complex environment integration, which has to be highly scalable directory services, which has provided highly scalable directory services and pro uh, provide with a security service and distributed file system, clock synchronization, threads, RPC. So this is highly scalable directory services. This is the most, uh, most important thing is it has to be produced with highly scalable directory service security service and a distributed it has it has to be distributed the file has to be distributed uh, with a different uh, cluster systems clock synchronization threads lightweight is also executed rpc remote procedure remote procedure communications remote procedure calls that is also used this ds dc and it has to be open standard but not available certain platforms open standard but not available certain platforms and some of its services have already been surpassed by further developments. It has to be more expensive and complex. It has to be used for DC, district uh, communications, district complex environment. This has to be expensive and complex. This DC RPG has some important advances over Sun OMC RPC. Some point of view, you can observe that Sun ONC RPC, it has a, it has have a, some D, DC RPC has a, some important advantages. Some advantages with a Sun ONC RPC. The DFS is more secure and easier to replicate and cache effectively than NFS. Network uh, services, the DFS is a more secure and easier to replicate and cache effectively. Caching means temporarily data we can access it. Replicates means that has to be duplicated. Secure and easier to replicate and cache effectively than N NFS. Compared to NFS system, the DFS has to provide with it. The DFS system has to provide with it advantages. Now, here can be a more useful large campus wide networks. The DFS has, has a can be a more useful large campus, uh, campus wide networks and it has to be supported with the replicated servers for read only data. Replicated server, same server, uh, same data has to be kept with it at several places. That time it has to be supported with the DFS systems. But it is only supported with the read only data. The data which we can read only. Now here, global clock synchronization. Here the first thing we have to observe that uh, serialization means global time. The serialization one by one has to be executed here. That has to be concerned with the serialization. That has to be needed with the global time. Failing, uh, failing to do tend to produce subtle and difficult to track errors. It has to be a track serialization needs global time. This time has to be tracking error, difficult to track errors. That has to be a very difficult thing. Track the errors. And in order to implement a global time services, so for implement the global time services, it has to follow with the DCE include DTS distributed time, uh, time service, which is better than the NTP. DCE with the DTS that has been better than better than with the NTP. What is the NTP here? Network time protocol. What is the NTP here? Network time protocol widely, which has widely employed the thousands of hosts across the internet. And it produces and it has provides support for variety of time resources. 
variety of time resources and it is needs to strict utc it has to be strict with a utc synchronization so we achieve other thing we achieve the global time service we achieve with the time servers also and the gps global position so this is uh, points we discuss on the global clock synchronization we have to globally maintain with uh, some systems as to maintain with the different types different uh, clock times and uh, one uh, many systems has maintained with the same thing, a variety of time resources here the uh, ntp has to maintain with a variety of time resources and the need uh, this has to be strict with the utc synchronization means it has to be a same thing utc synchronization all should have maintained with the same same clock so these are the things we discuss under the global clock synchronization so this is the way we have to maintain all those steps now we have created with a cluster setups so this is the points regarding how to set up with a cluster things this is the major points uh, discuss under this set up with the clusters cluster element so the main thing is once you have to establish a cluster the cluster offered up and effectively that it produce with the whatever the task is given by the user that that is completed by the completed by the cluster systems so this is the main aim to create with the clusters not only to maintain with the different uh, pieces or workstations but it has to be need effectively effectively completed tasks and it it produce the it produce the throughput high throughput means for the amount of time how many jobs are completed so this is the way we can set up with a uh, cluster computing that will be used with a high performance so this is the resources i will collect from this data uh, this test with high performance cluster computing artificial systems value on by bm like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates